Hey designers, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you a different way to sew a casing, also known as a tunnel or channel. This is a dress that I made. As you can see, it has a casing for plastic boning. There are two different ways to sew a casing. One is for plastic, steel, or white boning. The other way is for Rigeline. Today I'm going to show you three professional ways to sew a casing for Rigeline. Let's get into this. All right, let's get started. Here is method one. I'm going to show you on a transparent corset mesh so you can see what it looks like. We are going to sew it a half inch on the right side so the wrong side is inside. Next, we're going to take some of the seam allowance off, about one fourth, and this is what it looks like. Next, we're going to get a piece of fabric and cut it one and a half inch. The fabric doesn't have to be on the bias. That's because when you have a design that has straight lines, you can cut the fabric on the straight grain or the cross grain. The only time you cut the fabric on the bias is when you have a design with curves. That's when you need the bias to stretch around the curve. Let's fold the fabric and sew it a half inch. Let's cut some of the extra fabric off. There are different ways to turn the fabric inside out. You can use a loop turner, which is this one right here. You can also use a heavy duty thread, a safety pin, or my favorite, the bobby pin. For the bobby pin method, you take the fabric and you put a little hole, not too deep, just a little hole right here. Then you get the bobby pin and you put one side of the bobby pin inside the fabric and one side inside the hole like this. Once you do that, you push it in and you keep pushing till you get to the end or it doesn't really have to be at the end, but you have to push the bottom to turn inside the fabric so that it can keep going like this. Next, you're going to need to steam down the fabric. The seam allowance has to be in the middle like this when you're steaming it down, just like that. Next, you're going to take the boning and put it inside the casing. The boning is a half inch. The casing is also a half inch. So you have to pull the fabric so that the boning can go inside. And I do have to tell you, there is no judging here, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So you either have to wet your finger with your mouth or <laughs> have a cup of water, but you have to have a wet finger. And like I said, there's no judging. You do what you gotta do, and that's what it is. Now let's move on. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, and it's just like that. See? Let's bring back the corset mesh and put the casing in the middle of the seam allowance. Then sew both edges like this. This is the front and this is the back. I'm going to show you something you probably didn't know. Some people leave it just like this, but it's very weak. Honestly, I don't use Regeline much. I use steel boning most of the time. However, there are times that I use plastic or Regeline. So what I do is I put plastic boning inside for a little more strength, like this. Remember, the plastic boning is one fourth. So it could fit because the casing is a half inch and it looks like this. Let's get into method two. We're going to sew a half inch seam allowance on the right sides of the fabric. It looks like this. Trim it down to about one fourth. Next, you're going to use a pre-made bias tape which you can get on Etsy or Amazon. You can also make it with a bias tape maker. But for this video, I wanted to use a solid color, so I used the bias tape I bought from Etsy. This is a half inch bias tape. But when you try to put the boning in, it will give you a hard time because it's cut on the bias. 
So what I usually do is I put the bone in, in one side and steam it down so that it stays. Then I turn over the other side and steam it down so that it lays down better. Once that's done, you could put clips if you want to secure it so you could sew it on the corset mesh. This is how it looks. Don't forget to put that plastic boning in so it could be a little bit more stronger. I think this is actually better than just having the Rigeline by itself. Next is method three. You're going to sew it a half inch on the right side, then you're gonna trim it down. Let's get a piece of fabric, any kind of fabric. This one is satin. You can cut it on the cross grain or the straight grain. It doesn't have to be on the bias. Next, put your boning inside the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side. Turn one side over and sew close to the edge, but not too close. And when you do, take your time, because for some reason with this boning, sometimes the needle likes to jump off the line and the line becomes crooked. But it doesn't really have to be perfect, honestly, because you're going to use the same color thread as the fabric of the casing. I'm sewing it in white so you can see what I'm doing, but in reality, you should use black. If the line is a little crooked, it's okay. You won't see it, especially if you're using appliques for design. Here's one side. Turn over the other side and make it a little tight, but not too tight. After that, you can put some clips if you want it to be a little bit more secured. Let's sew. Here it is. Put the casing in the middle of the seam allowance and sew right on top of those two lines you just sewed. And voila! For this method, make sure you sew at the edges because if you don't, it will be tight for the plastic boning to go in. As you can see here, one side wasn't on the edge, so I struggled just a little bit to get it in, but I got it in. <laughs> so my favorite method is number one. Which of these methods is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section. All right, everybody, if you want to learn more about bus cups, here is a video for you. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to practice, practice, practice. Bye, everybody.